So what if we can only pick one? Hi, welcome back to the YAL tutorials. My name is Andreas Hense and I make videos on business process automation. This time we are going to talk about the XOR split. In the last tutorial we discussed the OR split and this time the XOR split but there is a subtle difference between the so-called explicit choice and deferred choice. In the explicit choice it is the system that decides which way to go. In the deferred choice it's the environment or the user who decides which way to go. So we will use a concrete example that is to be found in the supplementary material and we are going to dig into it right now. So here on the screen we have the your control center on the left hand side. We have already uploaded the YBKP file from the supplementary material. Then um, we have logged out as the admin and logged in as the user LOM. So user LOM can do administration tasks and also ordinary tasks as well. So you can see that from this extended menu here on the left hand side. Then in the editor we have loaded the tutorial 9.yaw file from the supplementary material and um, we will just see what happens in this um, workflow now. So it starts with formulate requirement and the idea is that after formulate requirement has been completed we have a token here in this condition and both tasks, define software development project and prepare software procurement are activated now and um, we can choose each of them and the choice is done by the user or by the environment and this is called a deferred choice. Afterwards um, we have several explicit choices and these are also XOR splits um, so um, after defined software development project we have an XOR split and this one um, decides based on data in, um, in the workflow uh, which way to go. So if the cost is smaller than 100,000 it will go this path and if it is greater or equal to 100,000 it will go down to approve proposition. And so um, you see that this is um, an explicit choice, an XOR split, and we have the similar splits in, um, in other uh, tasks here. And then we have the corresponding joins and we will just go through the workflow step by step now to see how it works. So um, we upload the specification here with this button to the YAWL engine. A new case will be launched with case ID 1 and um, if we go to the left hand side and we refresh we can see that this is launched now and if we go to the admin work list we can see that this is already assigned to Lorenzo Monaco and um, so I could just go to my work list because I'm logged in with this user now and I can immediately start editing the work item. So um, let's say we want a project called CRM, um, Customer Relationship Management. And the estimated cost is 200,000. We complete this and now we go back to the admin work list. And now you can see that there are two work items. One is define software development project. This is the one on top. And the other one is prepare software procurement. And um, let's just uh, take the first one. So define software development project. Um, if I go to my work list now and I just accept and start this work item. Uh, now going back to the admin work list uh, we have only defined software development project that is left here because the other one has been deactivated because 
we took the only token that was in this place, we took it for this task. So um, going back to my work list, I go to the edit symbol here and um, so the estimated cost is 200,000 and we will correct this value, we, we will say that it will cost 250,000 and the technology chosen is Java. I complete this, go back to the admin work list and now we go to approve proposition. So approve proposition um, has been selected because the cost is greater or equal to 100,000. So this was the explicit XOR split in this, uh, in this moment. And um, if we um, go to this, um, if we select this task and we look at the, the split predicates, We can see that start project is selected if the cost is inferior to 100,000 uh, euros and otherwise it is approved proposition. So this is what we would have expected. And we go to approved proposition, go to my work list and um, so we can, we can approve it. Let's say we just do this. We complete it here. Next, we go to the admin work list and we have start project now. So this is the task on top here. And we can assign a project manager. Complete. Go to admin work list and this is the end so we are already at the final condition in the workflow. That's all. That's that. That was easy, wasn't it? So in the next video we will talk about sub-workflows. See you then.